What's up guys? New year, new me. I am going to be much more refined, less curse words, more gentlemanly discourse. I'm just kidding. We're still gonna fuck some people up. What the f But we're gonna mostly focus on the substance of the arguments. That is my pledge that I would like to do this new year. I really wanna focus on the substance of the arguments and not get so angry at people. But it's hard sometimes when they're full of shit. But we'll get some good practice in today. Today, we have Dr. Ben Bickman on Instagram. Let's see what Dr. Bickman has to say. I've not watched this video yet. I want to live react. As a metabolic scientist, one of the things I'm interested in is protein metabolism in muscles. So I want to cite two studies to you. This is my wheelhouse. Zoom in at another time and look at the titles of these studies. Just I know so the know studies. I'm not making this up. But the best way to ensure that your muscles are making more protein than they're breaking down is of course to make sure you get enough high quality protein. True. But what might you couple that protein with? Well, there's an idea that protein plus carbohydrates will result in greater than normal muscle growth above the protein alone. One of the studies behind me shows that that's not true. What does work, however, is if you couple the protein with fat. Eh. And fat and protein are and there's together. the bullshit. When they're the same mass, so one to one by mass, that mass. will elicit greater muscle protein synthesis or muscle growth than just the protein alone. So protein and fat is more anabolic than protein plus carbs. Hold up. So this is an example. Just because somebody with a PhD says this stuff does not make it reality. Now he is correct in terms of the most important thing for maximizing muscle protein anabolism through nutrition is getting enough high quality protein. That is true. It is also true that carbohydrate with protein does not appear to further augment the muscle protein synthetic response to protein. So just giving protein alone or protein plus carbohydrate elicits the same muscle protein synthesis response. However, what he's not talking about is protein breakdown. And there are studies demonstrating that while carbohydrate does not enhance myofibrillar protein synthesis, it does inhibit protein degradation. The same studies do not show that for dietary fat. None that I'm aware of. And he didn't cite any studies. He just said protein and fat in a one-to-one -one mass ratio is more anabolic. Based on what? Your feels? So for those who don't know, Ben Bickman is uh, very slanted towards low carbohydrate diets. And there's just no evidence that what he's saying is reality. Certainly no evidence to suggest that protein plus fat is better than protein plus carbohydrate. The only thing that you might be able to claim is that protein plus fat Fish oil is better than protein plus carbohydrate for muscle protein synthesis. There are some studies demonstrating that high dose fish oil may enhance the anabolic response to protein, but the research is not super clear at this point. So don't go out and take, you know, handfuls of fish oil capsules thinking you're going to get jacked. Now, what does the long-term data say about gaining muscle, which at the end of the day, I love muscle protein synthesis. It's what I did my PhD on. This is literally my wheelhouse. Muscle protein synthesis is only a surrogate measure for muscle growth, which means if we have to look at actual growth of tissue versus a surrogate measure that we're using stable isotopes to estimate, the growth of tissue is a better measure. And I say this as somebody who loves muscle protein synthesis and did quite a bit of research on it. There are a couple of studies out there now looking at low carb diets versus carbohydrate containing diets that are equal in protein and calories and looking at muscle growth responses. And thus far, the research has shown that you actually get less lean body mass accrual with a ketogenic diet compared to a normal diet. Now, if we had to hazard a guess, this could be due to a couple of things. The first thing could be what we just talked about, which is carbohydrates and insulin have been shown to decrease muscle protein degradation. So that's part of that. It also could be due to impaired performance with resistance exercise. So there is research showing that if we're talking about like low intensity aerobic exercise, low carb versus other kinds of diets doesn't really seem to matter. But if we're talking about high intensity exercise or anaerobic exercise, which lifting weights is anaerobic for the most part, there is a very clear impact of the ketogenic diet on performance. So it either could be the differences in inhibition of muscle protein degradation 
or it could be that people just aren't performing as well in the gym and not able to create the same progressive overload or a combination or both. But when we look at the actual human randomized control trials assessing lean body mass accrual, we see that protein plus fat is not as good as a mixed diet. So you can cite whatever mechanistic studies you want, Ben, but the research thus far has shown that a ketogenic low carb diet actually impairs lean body mass accrual compared to a high protein non-ketogenic diet. And that's the latest episode of Facts Are More Important Than Your Feelings. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. We get the new year started right. 2022, let's go. I'll catch you next week.